Hey guys, so this is going to be the video on activities I plan to do with my oldest son over the summer to keep him from getting rusty and forgetting everything that he's learned. Now, I talked about this in a couple videos back and a couple of you wanted me to share my ideas, so that is why I'm doing this video. But if you have a preschooler and you wanna know my preschool ideas for the summer, um, let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to do a separate video for him. But this video is going to be strictly first grade moving into second grade. My very first tip to you guys though is to talk to your child's teacher. Find out where they're struggling or where you know they may need to improve on their skills and ask the teachers for advice. They are going to be your best resource when it comes to your individual child and what you really need to help them with over the summer. So the first topic I'm going to discuss is reading. I don't know about you guys, but my kids, some days they love it and other days they just don't want to do it. So it's recommended depending upon their age for children to read anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes a day or be read to. My oldest, his teacher recommends 30 minutes a day and asking him to sit down for 30 minutes straight to read is like asking him to go pull his teeth out. <laughs> so for us, what works best over the summer anyway, is to have him read for 15 minutes in the morning after breakfast, as we are, you know, waking up and getting ready for our day and then read 15 minutes before bed. And there we go. We've got our 30 minutes. Now that doesn't always work though. Sometimes he just does not want to do it. So to combat that, I will sit down and I will read to them and I will ask them questions and, you know, interact with them back and forth. So sometimes he can independently read and it's fine, but on the days that he doesn't want to, I do sit down and I will read to him and, you know, make sure I'm asking the right questions as I'm reading to know that he is paying attention and that he's understanding what I'm saying for you know, getting your kids to want to read and encouraging them to read is to take them to your local library, your local thrift store, or even just you know your big name brand bookstores and having them look for books that interest them, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Let them explore and find their own interests because we can, as parents, pick out books and be like, read this. But if they're not interested in them, they're less likely to pick them up and really want to read. And the goal for me personally is to have my kids want to read, not force them to read because it's what they need. So my oldest does have a library card. My youngest will be getting his library card soon. Um, so he doesn't have to use mommy's anymore because he's almost old enough to have his own. But they will each have their own library card. Over the summer, we go once a week to the library and they are able to pick out however many books that they think they, they need for that week. Um, and whatever reading level they prefer. Sometimes my oldest will pick super easy reads because he doesn't feel like reading a chapter book that week. And that's completely fine. If he wants to, you know, read multiple books versus just one book, that's okay. But letting your kids find their own interest in reading is going to help out a lot with getting them to read. Now, when you read to them, or even when you're not reading to them, it's good to ask them, questions about it. What was the main idea of the story? What was the moral of the story? You know, tell me about the characters, you know, tell, basically try to get them to retell the story to you. So you know that they, they read it and they understood what they were reading. Now, when I am reading to my kids, a big thing that I like to do is stop and like right before something big's going to happen. And I will ask them, Oh my gosh, what do you guys think is going to happen? What was that character's name again? Do you think you know, this, that, or, or whatever is going to happen. I like to ask those questions because it gets their mind going and it's so fun to see kind of what they think is going to happen. Um, but at the end of every chapter, I will definitely go over and kind of recap what we read, ask some questions and, you know, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow night? What do you think we're going to find out tomorrow night? Um, those sorts of things. So discussing what you're reading or, you know, asking those questions is very important. Another thing I like to do is when my kids find an interest in something, we dive a little bit deeper. So instead of just answering those basic questions, I like to, you know, go a little bit deeper, look it up online, print out papers if they want to, um, go to your local library and borrow books on those topics or go buy books on those topics, whatever works for your lifestyle, do that. I like to go to my local thrift store and find topics um, for my kids to look at because even my preschooler will pick these books up and be like, mom, what's this planet? What's this planet? You know, blah, 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 blah. blah. So um, we have tons of options. We have 
books um, about topics that they're interested in, which is bugs and space. And even like Ripley's Believe It or Not, my boys will pick these books up and read and look at the pictures and just go crazy for that kind of stuff. So Guinness World Book of World Records, you name it. They love that kind of stuff. We also have tons of books that kind of fit their interests that I stock up on throughout the year through Scholastic and again through the local thrift store. So he's got tons of books to read if for some reason we, you know, maybe we're going on vacation and we don't have time to go to the local library. Um, or, you know, we're just having a really busy week or one of the kids got sick, whatever it may be. We still have books at home too for him to pick up and read. Not a lot of people love to read. So um, hopefully those ideas help though. And, you know, you get your kids into reading. There's also programs out there. Barnes and Noble does it in some areas. Um, some of the local libraries, if your kids read a certain amount, um, they can get a free book or, you know, some of the local libraries do coupons to where you can earn a free pizza or earn a free popsicle or ice cream or whatever it may be. So check with your local libraries too and your local bookstores and see if they're doing anything, um, any sort of like summer reading program. That might help, but we are definitely going to be doing our summer reading programs and that also helps motivate my kids to read over the summer. Now math. Math, I feel like is really easy for me. My son loves math, so it's not an issue. He will sit there and do flashcards all day if you wanted him to, like he loves math. Not a problem there for him. Um, but not all kids love math and sitting there and doing flashcards all day, that's not something you want to do over the summer. So to kind of help with that, you can do board games. Now, a couple games that I don't have, um, which I probably should get, Yahtzee, that helps with basic addition. Um, Connect Four is a problem solving game. Card games of any kind, um, that can be basic addition and subtraction, ordering numbers, just having a deck of cards. You can do a whole bunch of games if you look up on Pinterest. Whole bunch of games for math with just a basic deck of cards. <laughs> so I can't stress that enough. Um, one of the things that the teacher wrote down here is Candyland, make your own game cards and use math facts instead of the colors. You can do that. But what I personally have here is Monopoly, good old fashioned Monopoly. He loves this game and it helps him kind of like in real life know, okay, I have to pay this much in rent. I have to know how much money I have. If I want to buy a property or I want to buy a hotel or a house, I, you know, it helps him problem solve and it helps him learn to count money. And he is, he's really good at it. So <laughs> that is a great money game. Another awesome thing that you can do is like pretend play, have you set up a little store and have your kids buy stuff from you. Um, my son's not really into pretend play. So board games are more up his alley. You can also have your kids earn money over the summer to buy whatever items they want, take them to the store, and they kind of are able to handle the money themselves too. But this works best for us, along with, you know, obviously when he wants something, he has to earn the money for it, and then he has to spend it, so he is learning the value of money. But anyway, um, another game that we love to have on hand is Battleship. And this is great for graphing because you have to, not only kind of like problem solve, but you also have to um, know how to read graphs and kind of figure out that kind of stuff. So Battleship, good one for you to have as well. Another game that we have here is called Topple. And this is a great STEM game. If you have younger kids, this is gonna be awesome. But for my oldest, there there's a couple ways that you can play this. Um, the basic play where you just try not to topple anything over. And then the math way, which is where you have to add up your points. So you are getting your addition and subtraction by adding and subtracting when things fall, that sort of thing. It's all in here. So you are learning your math skills. So think outside of the box when it comes to board games. Board games are great for those problem solving and math skills. I cannot say enough about board games. Board games are awesome because your kids learn as they play and it's great. So <laughs> that's like my biggest thing that I cannot stress enough is board games. Another great thing to help your kids with their math skills is baking. I've been baking with my kids since they were like itty bitty, you know, able to put a measuring cup into a pan. <laughs> so baking, what they do is not only are they reading the recipes, so you're getting them to read. So, you know, that's a plus. They're also learning their fractions. If you go and have a pizza, 
have have your kids be like, okay, how many slices? If I have this many slices, how much of the pizza is left? Just, you know, throw in math problems in everyday life and they're not even going to realize they're learning as they're learning. And the last thing for math that we are going to focus on personally is um, having my son learn to read a manual clock. I'm so used to having digital clocks that I didn't even think about it. And it's something that we need to be teaching him to do is to read and a, you know, a manual clock or a, a regular clock that's not a digital. So he is learning kind of what time he gets up, what time he goes to bed, what time we have dinner, what it looks like on the clock when it's that time, where's the big hand and the little hand. Um, you can go to Dollar Tree and they have all kinds of activities that you can do with your kids in the teacher section. So you can get workbooks if you wanna do workbooks, flashcards if you wanna do flashcards. Um, they have little packets to where they, you know, kind of guide your kids on how to do research projects, how to learn cause and effect, and all kinds of stuff. So you can use that as a good tool too. But I, I like to keep summer fun, and I want them to learn as they play, and not make it be like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this this summer. Oh, I don't want to do it. So for me, these this works better than that kind of stuff. But you know, maybe that would work better for your kids. So, you know, you just kind of have to think outside of the box sometimes. So those are my math ideas. We're definitely going to have to figure out some sort of clock thing, though. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Now, the last topic is writing. For my son, he can, he can list out things to you. He can write a couple basic sentences. But we need to work on him going more in depth with his writing, explaining more details, going a little further into the story versus just being like, ah, oh, we, we went to the beach. What else? <laughs> what else did, what about the beach? You know what I mean? So he, he needs to work on that. And in order to, to help him over the summer, we are going to have him journal. I'm not going to have him do it daily. Um, I feel like that would be a little too much. And his teacher agrees. She said that doing, having him do it daily would be too much, but maybe having him sit down at the beginning of the week and then, you know, the middle of the week or maybe once a week and just having him explain what he did that week, what was his favorite thing about that, or, you know, if you guys are going on vacation, have your child sit down and write about their vacation and what they did and what they loved and kind of try to get them to go into detail about that or, you know, have them sit down and write a, a facts that they learned about space or whatever it may be. Um, but journaling is going to be the big thing to help his writing skills. Um, and that's the biggest thing we have to work on him with this uh, summer. Um, obviously spelling, there's a lot of things you can do to get your kids to spell. Um, my son, spelling, reading, spelling, that kind of stuff just comes very easy to him. So for us, I could just feel like spell this word and he knows it. Um, and if he doesn't know it, all I have to do is have him say it a couple of times and then it, it kind of sticks. So for him, spelling is really easy. Um, but, you know, Scrabble is a great game to play with your kids to, to get them to learn. Maybe doing some word searches, um, crossword puzzles, those are also fun to do. And then if you go on Pinterest, there's a ton of ideas to help your kids with spelling. If your kids are more arts and craftsy or whatever it may be. So I don't have a whole lot of spelling ideas for you because again, th that just comes naturally to my son. So it's hard for me to um, give you guys ideas on spelling. Plus I, that's like my worst, worst subject. <laughs> I don't have a lot of ideas for you guys there. But that is gonna be like my basic stuff um, for each category. Now another game that I love is Beat the Parents. This is just kind of like random facts. It's, it's a trivia challenge. So you kind of go against your kids with things that they would know, and then um, it could be anything from geography to, I don't even know, like basic things you would know, but your kid wouldn't, and then things your kids would know, but you have no idea what they're talking about. So this is a fun little trivia game for your kids, um, and it kind of stumps both the parents and, <laughs> and the kids, which is nice. Um, what are some other things? We are going to be doing some fun science projects over the summer. Um, really, Pinterest is great for that. I think those things, though, are going to be more under my, like, fun summer things to do with your kids that aren't going to cost you a ton of money video. This is more, you know, straightforward. But we definitely are going to be doing some science projects, some kind of sensory STEM-related projects over the summer. 
I mean, I've got tons and tons of ideas, but I think this video is long enough, so I'm going to put that kind of stuff and maybe the summer fun video that I'm going to be doing with my boys versus kind of the how to get them to learn and not get super rusty on their skills. But I think that's it for me. If you guys have any advice, maybe something I didn't go over, an idea you have that maybe I'm not thinking of, um, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. But my biggest thing is just having fun with my kids and teaching them through play. No matter how old they get, I feel like that is the best way to go about it. And, um, and I look forward to seeing if you guys have any ideas maybe that I'm not thinking of. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. Thank you.